it's Labor Day weekend and I'd like to be laboring. As you can see behind me, I have a lot of stuff to pick up, but unfortunately I was not able to get any dumpsters. They're totally none available. And the soonest they could get me one was September 5th, and they said only one at a time and only 30 yarders. I need several 40 yarders here. So hopefully sometime in mid-September, maybe early October, I'll be able to get at these piles. In the meantime, I have some other stuff that I'll be doing, and I'll be taking you along for the ride. This is a Victron Smart Shunt. You can think of a shunt as a gas gauge for your battery bank. It measures the amps in and out and will give you wattage loads and things like that. So I'm going to get this installed. It's pretty easy. All right, let's do it. Um, so this side goes towards your battery. This shunt sits on the negative battery line. So it's pretty straightforward. Just hook up your, your leads on either side. And then inside this right here, you hook up the positive side. There's a little two battery plus, and then right next to it is auxiliary. So if you want to monitor the voltage of another battery bank, you can use the auxiliary too. Take the positive battery lead right into the battery plus on the shunt. You have your battery minus. And then your battery system this way. Now it's ready to be energized. And then we'll have a little Bluetooth light on here. And we just basically pull up your phone and go into the app to configure it. And then I also, instead of having a Servo GX, I just put the VE Direct software right on a Raspberry Pi. So that saves quite a bit of money just by putting on a Raspberry Pi and then USB with the communication cables into the Victron devices. So here's the app and then the smart shunt is right here. You just click on it. And then the default password is six zeros. You got to pair and connect with your, your Bluetooth and you just put in the six zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six. Click OK and it'll connect. And it looks like it needs an update, so we'll do the update, and then I'll be right back. So here we are in the settings. It just wants you to set the battery capacity, and it's actually defaulted to 200 amp hours, and that's how big my battery is. And I'm not doing the auxiliary input, so we're going to ignore that. Actually, it wants us to set it to none, since there's none there and then depending on your battery chemistry there's just some settings to set if you're so inclined all right we're good to go i have all my settings set for my lithium battery 200 amp hours i did make some adjustments to the manufacturer's specifications and we are done that is it it's just pretty much putting that thing in line connecting your bluetooth app Configuring your battery battery chemistry connecting to the other uh, Victron equipment. So they work together. It's basically a VE network So they work in tandem and together to make sure you get the best charge and Then it shows you like I'm already, you know pulling 280 watts off the solar outside So I got a bunch of treated lumber here. I'm gonna make a ground mount for my solar panels I have eight that are on my on my cabin roof, but they're really not at an efficient angle so I found a couple designs online that I like. I don't know, I'm just kind of work my way through it and see how it goes. I know a lot of the projects that I do up here are taking a lot of time. I've had this property almost three years, but everything that I've been doing up here is without debt. So I'm paying as I go, and I want this place just to be, you know, completely debt free. So that I'm not a servant to debt and that I have more freedom while I'm here, living here, um, not not chasing after a lot of things. I found a small house that I want to build here next year. It's about 650 square feet. So I'm starting the process. I found some plans. I still have a lot of more cleanup to do here before I really get into that, but my mind's already starting to shift as a lot of the bigger projects here are coming to a close. So I do want to build a small home here. And I'm not doing this YouTube channel for money. Um, I'm just, you know, doing it to share information. I think most information uh, should be free. And, 
you know if i if i run into issues or i like a product i'll let you know i don't i'm not going to do any sponsored videos or you know i'm not monetized i'm not again i'm not doing this for money so if you find or like something that i'm doing great or if you can learn something even though this isn't a how-to channel i'm just you know out here sharing my experience and sharing the process i'm cutting my angles at 31 degrees you can see it's uh 31 degrees right here 31 degrees at my location is the optimum all year angle for solar panels to be in. I'm not building something that's adjustable, so it's just going to sit and be efficient all year round. Okay, this is what I have for my solar ground mount so far. This is not where it's going, it's just where I built it. Because I'm doing it by myself, so I kind of use the wall of the cabin to give me a, a hand. It can fit eight 100 watt Renogy panels. I'm gonna take them off the cabin roof next weekend. I just wanted to get this pretty much set up. I would have liked to have made it higher, but by doing it with four foot posts, I was able to basically get two for the price of one. You know, instead of doing an odd cut on an eight foot, I went four foot and I'm gonna prop it up probably on some some blocks to get the front off. The reason I would want the front higher is just so that when the snow comes off, it has somewhere to go. Well, yeah, it's basically two by sixes, two by fours, all treated, four by fours in the back. And it's 91 and a half inches long. And that gives an inch and a half spacer between each panel. So they have somewhere to bracket. So each panel will bracket together on these beams right here and I did it at a 31 degree angle and the length of the boards from the top to the bottom is seven foot exactly basically I needed seven foot by seven foot but in order to get the right spacing width wise I had to go 91 and a half if you have any questions let me know now I just need to get the four by four foot posts in the front well, I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's not done. I still need to add some cross members, set it up on some small like paper bricks or a little block. And yeah, it should be good to go. So likely in the next episode, I'm going to take down my solar panels off the cabin roof and install them here. And then I'll run the wire along here and into the cabin. All right. Catch you next time.